why, if you have everything you need at home, why does there even need to be any change? Well, I do like smoking weed, you know. It's, it's, okay. Uh, Hello? Hey. Um, what's your name? Oh, it says here you're anonymous. Yeah, you can call me Snoopy. Okay, I like that. Why uh why Snoopy? What is there uh is like something behind that? It's it's my dog's name. Okay. Um so Snoopy, what's going on with you? Uh well Yeah, I've been on probation for about eight years now. Mm-hmm. And I'm about to get off in one week. You've been on probation for eight years, you said? Eight years, yeah. What is uh, probation like? What are the ground rules of probation? Well, I live in a small town, so it's like, well, first of all, ground rules is no doing pot, no smoking weed at all, no drinking. You got to go to meetings. It's a pain in the ass. Okay. Um, so you mentioned you live in a small town. Yeah. And so, like, a couple of different times, people have, like, reported me from my probation officer just for, like, you know, uh, going to the bar, hanging with people, which is obviously breaking the rules, but, you know. Interesting. People yeah, around the town have reported you to your probation officer for breaking the rules? Yes. Why do you think that they do small that? Of a town. What do you What do you believe I, is in it for them uh, to report you? Good question. But it's happened multiple times. You know, it's like uh, uh, people out trying to ruin lives, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um. So, can I ask why you were on probation? Yeah. Um. Like eight years ago, I got caught selling just good drugs, I would say, uh, ecstasy and acid and mushrooms. And so the cops busted my house, and I had like 10 pounds of weed, uh, like $40,000 cash, and, and some ecstasy and mushrooms. And, and then I got put on probation. I, I went into jail for about seven months. And then, uh, and then I got onto ankle monitor, which was a breeze. Everyone should do it. And then, uh, and then served the time on probation. And then I had another charge while still on probation of ordering drugs off the dark web. But this time I thought that they were legal drugs. You thought uh, that you were ordering illegal drugs off of the dark web. Yeah. Hand to God, right now, I thought that what I was ordering was legal because it was like a research chemical. But Snoopy, if it was uh, legal, why would they be selling it on the dark web? Well, it was uh, it was on the gray web. So I basically like emailed a guy from China oh, okay. and he sent me something. Yeah. I okay. paid for it with Bitcoin, but yeah. And... You were caught, and then how did that manifest in more charges? Does that just extend your current yeah, probation? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yes. Another two years, which I served on ankle monitor, and then extended out my probation even longer. But in one week, I am about to get off. I have just intense anxiety. You know, it's uh, more of like this impending doom thing, like the whole world is about to collapse on me. So you were on the ankle monitor for two years? Yeah. What were you, and and with the ankle monitor, were you just not allowed to leave the house? Yeah, exactly. I had four hours a week of uh, free time, which I think is honestly too low. You know, it's like, uh, you know, a lot of people go outside, and that's very curing of their addiction, I would say. And I'm big into disc golfing, and and I only had four hours a week to get, like, shopping done and maybe go on a walk, you know? 
What kinds of things would you do to bide your time if you couldn't go outside? Uh, Xbox. In Destiny. uh, Computer games. Mm -hmm. Uh, Throw the ball in the yard for my dogs. Could you tell me more about this uh, anxiety and impending doom that you're feeling as a result of your probation being over? I would, I would, I would think that that would be a positive thing that you're looking forward to. And I'm curious why you feel anxiety oh, it is. about it. Uh, it is. I just uh, maybe that's the anxiety causing it. Is that I'm I'm just thinking that something bad is going to happen. You know, even though I'm not doing anything wrong, uh, that, you know, I guess it's just a big thing after not being able to do anything after so long. And then suddenly, you know, you don't have probation officers that can suddenly stop at your house or I can go out to the bar and get a drink. I can go to the dispensary and buy weed, you know, it's, it's just a big difference in my life. So where is the anxiety coming from? What you said you said that you're afraid of what bad things could happen. Do you have any examples of of specific bad things that you're afraid might happen? Uh yeah, actually it's uh my wife, she smokes weed and she drinks. And so I'm in this kind of predicament where if they were to stop by right now, I like I would get in trouble just by proxy, I believe. Mm-hmm. You know, there's alcohol in the house. There's weed in the house. I'm not doing it, but mm-hmm. she is. But then here in a so, week, I will be doing it. You know, so it's like I'm in this tough position where it's like I can't really. So wait a minute. So really so is your. So, I mean, what you just described is an anxiety over potentially being caught while still on probation. Is that what you're... Are you anxious in this time period right now? Or uh, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to probe well, you about, like, yeah. you know, what, what is it that you're anxious about that you think might happen uh, that could go wrong once you are free from probation? More, it's just the fear of unknown, I'd say. I mean, since I've been on probation, I've gotten married. We've gotten multiple animals together. Uh, You know, life is good, but it's just kind of, uh, yeah, just something I haven't experienced in a very long time. You know, I I got arrested 21, you know, and now I'm almost 30. (laughs) So is it more so, uh, let me take a stab at it, is it just like, you have your life is is pretty small and you know literally being lived within this finite circle for the past 8 years and it's comfortable you're used to it um it sounds like it's you know been nice you have your wife you have your animals you have your house things seem like they've been okay for you from what i've uh you know gathered from the way you're talking about it and now all of a sudden, that comfortable circle is opening up to a wide, expansive sea of the infinite, and the the yes. size of that infinite is giving you anxiety. Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, is there anything over these past eight years that you have really wanted to do? That you could not do because of your probation that you are now free to do. There was a vacation. You know, I couldn't leave town for a very long time. But I just did that. I just got married and went on my honeymoon. And Mm -hmm. that was a possibility. I mean, it was... I couldn't smoke. I couldn't drink on my honeymoon. You know? Mm -hmm. Uh, So that was fun. Uh, but still, it was a vacation. You know, man i I think that, it. I think at first I was struggling to understand where you were coming from, but I actually kind of get it now. I'm I'm thinking back to the pandemic, 
um, where all the opportunity costs of the world disappeared. And for once, things, of you know, for some people, everyone kind of handled it differently and, and has different philosophies on how they want to live life. But for once, the, the smaller your world is, the more manageable it is. And, and there's something nice yeah. to that. And I remember feeling like uh, uh, all of the anxieties of, oh, I could do anything of of that big unknowable ocean of the universe for the first time ever disappeared, not just for me, but for everyone. And there was a weirdly comfortable thing to it that I'm, I'm kind of keying into yeah. with your situation. And... Um, well, let me ask you. Let, well, let me ask you this. Even You're saying change. Why? Why, if you have everything you need at home, why does there even need to be any change? Well, I do like smoking weed. You know, it's, it's okay. Uh, who doesn't? Well, a lot of people, but you know. <laughs> well, I mean, okay. Well, so I mean, listen. If you want to smoke weed, and you, you know, you you know that it's not gonna fuck you up in any kind of negative way, then go smoke weed. But I mean, we're talking about your anxiety over th- your world opening up. Yeah. Are you anxious about? Does, is it, let me ask you: Is there any part of you? That's anxious about any negative. So you haven't smoked weed in eight years. Is that correct? Um, well, through a loophole in my probation, I tried to get a medical card. And so this last Christmas, I was allowed to smoke for one week. And then, okay. and then they canceled it and said it wasn't a good enough reason. And so I had one week of... Uh, Smoking weed. Okay. I'm going to assume that over these past eight years, you have had little pockets of pieces where you have, you know, however legally or not smoked weed or, or gotten drunk. But but in the past eight years, it more or less has not been, you know, I guess legal by your terms. Thing. Yeah. Right. So a constant thing. And so is there is any part of you what anxious? What I wanted to do. Yeah. Is any part of you anxious about any negative effects that reintroducing a consistent stream of weed smoking and alcohol drinking back into your life might have? Well, I would hope I wouldn't have a constant stream of alcohol. I don't I don't think alcohol is the best for you. Okay. Or me. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I would say it's just anxiety in general. You know, it's like, what what if i go back to jail what if i get back on probation for for some something stupid you know okay do you have any plans or let's not even talk about plans but desires thoughts intrusive thoughts um temptations to do anything that might land you back in a situation like that no not Good. Really. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Intrusive thoughts, maybe, maybe intrusive thoughts. <laughs> oh, we all got those. Yeah. But I think I think that after eight years, it's kind of, uh, you know, I'm sick of being under the government's thumb. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. So, well, I, I, would I feel hope it's I feel in my, my best interest. I feel where your anxiety is is coming from, and I also feel like you'll you'll adjust to your freedom after a little bit of time, and it won't be as scary for you uh, once once some time has passed. Yeah, definitely. Well, it says here you definitely made me feel a little better. Better. Okay, good, good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad that this uh, was something. Um, something. I'm glad to hear that you also you were should, able uh, to build a a a a, a, um, a good life for yourself 
while on probation. Yeah. It sounds like you got a good thing going. Uh, yeah, it definitely taught me to, to, to not fuck up, I'd say, and uh, not have to deal with the police, but yeah. You were about to say that I should do something. You should come to Alaska on your tour. Okay, so I saw here it says Anonymous29 is from Alaska. I saw that you're from Alaska. Um, I don't want to dox you, but I really I really want to go to Anchorage. S- find some... I don't know how many people that listen to this are in fucking Alaska. Well, well good thing I'm not from Anchorage. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> I shouldn't do Anchorage? I feel like if I'm going anywhere, yeah. I'm going to go to Anchorage. I, well, and I you know what? With exactly. your newfound... Where do you think? Where do you think I should go? That's the most popular city. I don't okay. Know, make some rounds. Yeah, there's a couple different cities. Well, here Fair I'll right. go to I'll go to Anchorage, Anchorage, and then you, with your newfound freedom, go. should come, and we'll talk. Yeah, yeah. Or I just fly down south for a bit and find a live show you're doing. Um, Snoopy, well, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, I love you. I love you too. Have a good one. I like that guy. He had an interesting dilemma. He had an interesting dilemma that I, like I said to him, I didn't understand at first and then I kind of got it because I was relating it to my own experience with the pandemic. Um, and there's a weird, I guess, paralysis of choice where if you are are limited to a certain area that you can exist in and certain finite actions you can take there's a almost a comfort in it that I think Snoopy was reeling in for the past eight years. And it's a it's really bizarre because yes, the world is opening back up for him now that his probation is open. But just because the world has opened up, he doesn't have to do anything. He could, if he wanted to continue to enjoy his comfort, live exactly the same way he's been living for the past eight years. There is no law saying that he has to travel anywhere or do anything outside of his the, his bubble but it, it's it's fascinating to me just from like a some objective standpoint um that just the knowledge that the world is opening up even though he's not being forced to leave his comfort zone just the the fact that the option exists is giving him anxiety i find that interesting I've kind of, like I said, I, 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 I connected with that a lot with the pandemic. You know, the idea that you can do anything is uh, both beautiful and weirdly paralyzing. Hello? Hi. How's it going? Um, pretty good. How are you? I'm okay. I'm a gecko on the computer. Crazy times we're living in where you can just do that. Um, Very. What are you what are you up to? What's going on in your life? Um right now I'm just uh sitting in bed with my cat, but um I don't know. I'm, I'm I didn't think I was going to get on here. I'm kind of nervous. No, don't be. Look, <laughs> I you know everyone I I was saying this a lot during the live shows. Everyone um is kind of is nervous when they first get on, and then after like two minutes, you'll be like, "Oh, I'm just on the phone with a person hanging out." Um, so yeah. don't worry, but that'll 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 go away eventually. But um, what's is Brianna? Is there anything in particular that you called in to talk about? Um, I was trying to think about something, you know, when I was calling. Um, there's like one thing that stood out. I know you can like what it is but it's giving me a lot of anxiety um and i haven't really talked to anyone about it so uh do you do you want to talk about it 
Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I, I mean, listen, <laughs> I, 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 you know, um, you on, only if you want to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I think that's fine. I don't think, no one's listening anyway, no one that I know. And even if they are, I mean, it'll come out eventually. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll just say I'm pregnant. Not that any of you guys care, but like, you know, obviously that's something crazy uh, in my life. So do people in your life not know that you are pregnant? Um, only, only the dad. Um, and it's really early, so... Mm-hmm. Um, are is there a is there a reason why? And by the way, I know that you're you know I uh, haven't talked about this uh, with anyone. So look, if I ask you any questions about anything that you you know don't want to answer, don't don't uh, feel like you have to. Um, mm-hmm. Is there is there a reason why you haven't told anyone? Um, I guess I'm I'm kind of nervous. I mean, I'm 25. It's not like I'm like a kid but um i guess well the relationship is kind of new and i everything's great and like i know this is something i've wanted you know i've always wanted to be a mom but like when it happens it's kind of it kind of hits a lot different in what way is it hitting you different um I guess just like not knowing if I guess everyone if they're in that situation not, doesn't know if they're going to be able to handle it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Guess just like if I'm making the right decision. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, is, is it is it is it a decision that you have thought a lot about? Um, yeah. Okay, tell, can I hear about kind of the thought processes and, you know, the the what the bouncing of thoughts back and forth has been? Um, well, it's like, I, I don't have like a, you know, great career or something, something like that. Um, like, I'm in a relationship with the father and he's he's a lot more, you know, stable and like, I guess, you know, we wouldn't, I wouldn't have to worry about, um, like things being handled or taken care of, you know, we could, we would be able to handle it. But like, um, like I said, since it's a newish relationship, I just kind of want to obviously make sure that like, if, and you never know if a a relationship's going to work out, whether you're like married or whatever. Um, but, I guess just like thinking in my head if I can, if I'd be willing to do that alone, if it ever came to that, you know, not that I, Mm. I don't think I have, I don't have any reason to think about that, but. How long have you been in a relationship with, with the father? Um, less than a year. Okay. Okay. And is, is he excited about the pregnancy as well? Um, yeah, like he's been, pre- he's been really supportive and hasn't, um, you know, every time we've talked about it or, uh, I guess I've asked what he thinks he hasn't, hasn't suggested that I get an abortion or, you know, he's supportive, like say like, let's do it or whatever, but it's just scary, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and you said to me that this is something that you have always known that you wanted to do yeah okay okay um you know i feel like the feelings that you have where you know first of all i'm glad to hear that this is something you want you know it's not something that you're feeling like you're being pressured into it's it's not you know uh uh something where you know i'm glad to hear that the the father is also has you know is on the same page as you are with everything those are those are are great things to not have be hurdles right in all of this right um and, and you know i mean 
you know what you want. You made the decision to go for it. And then you're dealing with these feelings of, uh, am I going to be able to handle it? And I get the feeling I'm not a mom. I don't have kids, but my mom has kids. And uh, I get the feeling that your feelings of not knowing whether or not to handle it are about as normal as they could possibly be in this situation. I, it has yeah. to be something that I'm sure everybody who is about to have a kid feels and and eventually deals with and, and overcomes. And I think that you sound like, again, you're going into this for the right reason, which is that you want to. And I think that even though it'll be challenging, I, I, I think that you'll overcome those challenges. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I guess um, it's kind of also just feeling like I haven't done enough, you know, like um, like thinking you would have done more uh, by that point, like bringing a kid into the world. You know, I want to have like things to show and like be proud of kind of. Can I can I ask what Sorry, kinds of I'm things? getting emotional. <laughs> No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, and by the way, like, you know, like I keep telling you, um, you know, I, I only want you to have this conversation if you feel like, you know, you want to and everything. I know it's something you haven't talked about before. Yeah, um, I guess that's why, because I haven't talked to anyone about it. So t can I ask you this? You said that uh, there are things that you felt like you wanted to do or sh or have to show for. What Can I, can I hear some of those things? Any examples? <gasps> Um, I really don't know. That's why it sucks. Like, I guess that's the only reason I'm doubting things is because I don't have, like, any anything figured out yet, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, if... To me, if you you don't have clear examples of, oh, I want to accomplish X thing, but I don't think I can do it if I have a baby then if we don't even know what X thing is, then how can we jump to the conclusion that you can't do it while also having a kid? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, I mean, if I gave you a second to think about it, are there, are there things that, that you really can think of that you want to do that you're afraid you might not be able to do? And, maybe if we talk about it a little bit we we can realize that maybe maybe we really can do those things um i i don't know i haven't i still haven't been able to find some uh i guess career path or like figure out exactly what i want to do i know i mm -hmm. want to um help people i'm not great at the like uh I mean, I can do a nine to five, you know, anyone can, but it's not, it's not, um, like what I'm drawn to. Mm -hmm. Um, I really, I really, it's, I feel like it sounds so stupid, but I always wanted to be a mom. So like, that's kind of, mm, I feel like everything else was like, as, as long as I was able to like provide or like give a good life, like that's what I wanted. Um, but I don't know. No, I can't, I don't know any, I don't know any, like, concrete thing that I would well, like to accomplish, really. If, if what you're saying is, um, is, is true, it sounds like you're, you're doing the thing that you want to do. Yeah. Um, you know, I, un I understand why... There's a lot of fear that having a kid can be limiting, but also, I mean, you're very young and, um, I feel like anything that you would want to do, there's a lot of time for you to do it and you're doing a thing that you've always wanted to do. So, you know, you're sitting here and you can't think of anything concrete aside from being a mom that you want to do and you're doing the thing that you want to do. And I, I you know, I think that's, that's great. And um, I think there's lots of people out there who have kids that later 
in life, maybe five years from now, when you're 30 and the kid is five, you you are like, oh, I want to fucking paint stuff. And you find a way to finagle that into your life or any other things that you would want to do. You know, I, 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 I feel like this idea of, of limitations that you're setting doesn't have a concrete basis. And so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so afraid of it. Okay. I get that. (laughs) I mean, you could tell you could tell me if you if you don't agree or if you think otherwise or if you have any other no, no, thoughts I do on any agree. of this. You know, it makes sense. I guess I just feel like um, you know, obviously it depends on like how the future goes with like you know my relationship or the structure of it or however we work that out, but like. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I guess pe- I guess I'm worried about people judging too. For like, mm. people kind of judge or like. My family will support me and everything, but it's also like I think they'll think that stuff too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I I hope that you understand at least from where you know from where I from where I see it from what you've told me you're making a decision in the direction of what you want out of life yeah. And uh, I I hope that you understand that. And I hope that you feel confident in that. And I hope that your confidence in that supersedes any of your friends or family's wow. judgments on your decisions. Because I, I really feel yeah. like it should. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> you How say do you you're feel? not a therapist, you know, but here you are. Um, I feel good. I just i i've i've felt excited, you know, the whole time. I just um been on the fence, like you know, should I? I I have time, like I have time to make a decision, you know, or like to think about my options. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I was just kind of doing that, but I, I, I know like what you're saying it is right. If that's kind of what I have wanted and, you know, I'm able to, to do that in the right situation. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. That's basically it. Um, Brianna, is there anything else that um, you you want to say, or any aspect of this that that you feel like we didn't cover that you want to talk about before we go? Um, no, I. Um. Also, okay. Somebody's probably. I have a question. Somebody's Hit probably me. asked this before. Sure. It's stupid. Hit out um, me. How how often do you watch the Gek Suit? I have probably bought more. This is embarrassing <laughs> to say, but I have bought more Gek Suits than I have washed Gek Suits. That is uh, a, a testament to my laziness. Um, so do you have like different ones? You just toss them out when you're done? Some of the, they get like tattered and destroyed and lost. Yeah, that one. Um, that one. Everyone was worried about um, your jewels coming out on that one. Keep your like. Oh <laughs> yeah, my fu- yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a big yeah. There's a big fucking hole in my pants right now. So this one will probably be thrown to go to the to the 
to the to the wolves. Um, hey, Brianna, I pay top dollar for that. You, know, I don't think I, I don't, I don't think I could sell this suit in good conscience. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll do like a fucking charity thing or some shit like that. Ooh, but um, ooh, yes, at one of your lives, at one of the that lives. could be fun. That could, be, oh man, that actually could be a good idea to do it at a live. Okay, I'll think about that. You're helping <laughs> me out here, Brianna. I appreciate this, Brianna. Um, I just want to say, I, I know that you came in, you, uh, you, and this has honestly like been my favorite part of doing this shit. Is I know that you came into this like feeling nervous and unsure if you wanted to share anything, and uh, I just want to say I really appreciate you sharing all that stuff. I know it was uh, a tough thing. Um, I'm proud of you for making decisions in life that are difficult, but that you know are the right ones to make for you and your happiness and what you want to do. I hope that you don't feel limited. I hope that you feel quite the opposite, as you should. Feel empowered, feel infinite to do whatever it is you want. And um, I, 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 wish you, I wish you good luck in the future, man. Thank you so much, Slyle. Have a good night. You as well, Brianna. You know what? Okay, I'm going to come out with this. I'm going to come out with this. I I contradicted myself in that phone call. I really did. I contradicted myself because I've said and 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 actually I liked that I liked that phone call because it kind of made me have to face something that I've said a lot. I have said a lot on this podcast that the the only irreversible things you could do to change your life is have a, is get arrested or have a kid. And I had to face that one now. Because I was telling her that she should feel as though life is infinite and not super limited. And and what going into that conversation, and I was really thinking about it the whole time. I was thinking I was thinking about like I was thinking about my parents and you know the the lives that they live. Uh, thinking about other people I've talked to on this podcast that are parents, people uh, you know I've seen in media, people I know that are parents, and they do stuff. They really do. I feel like I, I kind of ate my words at that conversation because I was thinking about it, and they do do stuff. They do find time in their lives to do things that they want to do. And especially Brianna, because Brianna was so young that like... Her life could could run a billion different ways. She could have the kid and then be like, you know what? I actually want to be fucking... I'm trying to think of anything here. I used painting as an example. Let me get... I want to start a podcast about the Sopranos. And I bet she could find some time after she puts the kid to bed to record her Sopranos episodes. And do her thing. Just any, just anything. I, I really, and I, and I really do believe that. I do believe that there's enough room in a life to accomplish many things. And it sounded to me like the forefront thing in her mind that she wanted to accomplish was um, to to be a mother. And so I'm really glad that she's going after that accomplishment. And then you know, to, on top of that. Um, this is another thing I talk about in the podcast all the time is she had this general idea of what she wanted to do, which was to help people. F fantastic, beautiful, amazing. Start with the kid, help the shit out of the kid. And then eventually the kid will, 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 will slowly over, over the years, because as much as we think life is short, life is pretty long, um, become self-sufficient and, Give her some time to help other people in whatever way she wants to. If she wants to get involved in volunteer work, if she wants to start some business, if she wants to f give a guy on a street five dollars, whatever her fucking way is of helping people, I think she'll be able to do that. And I think that she'll be able to live a nice and um, happy life. And I'm excited for her. And I, I hope that she internalizes all that and really feels it because I, I, I do believe it. Um... Beautiful. Next call. Hello. Hello. Is this Christian? Yeah. It's, wait, am I, am I in? You're at, you're, you said that just now, like, did I annoy you? I apologize, did I, I apologize no, if I did. No. You seemed, you seemed a little bit annoyed. No, it's okay, I'm no, not. Wait, am 
right. coming at you. I just want to know how you're feeling. Hello? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I could hear you. Am I in? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. No, no, you didn't annoy me. Okay, well, I, you said hello in like a kind of an annoyed way, and I just wanted to make sure. I'm not offended if I annoyed oh, you. No, we can, no, I, just, I can handle no, that having upset like you. No, that was like a hello with a question mark. <laughs> no, that was like a hello with a question mark. I'm sorry. What is your name again? My name is Christian. Christian. Um, what's going on with you, Christian? Um, not, not much. Just here, you know, I mean... I'm pretty, I'm kind of stoned. Okay. How stoned is kind of you? stoned? Like on a scale from one to 10? Oh, fuck. Um, I'd say a good solid, like 12. You're a, tw that's not kind of stoned. That's extremely <laughs> stoned. <laughs> eh, kind of, sort of. Okay, I'm gonna just yeah, you know you don't, I'm not even, I'm not gonna trust I'm not going to trust your firsthand um, experience, but judging by your actions and words over the course of this phone call, I you sound like you're at an eight. At an eight, okay. I mean that's that sounds plausible. Um, Christian, what's what's up with you, man? Is there? A thing that you called in to to want to talk about today? Oh, uh, yes. Um, I actually harass my wife with a turtle puppet, like outside in public. You harass your wife with a turtle puppet outside in public. Yes, I pretty much like make like very awkward moaning noises to her, like ear and it's the okay. funniest thing like her reaction is the most funniest thing do you bring the turtle puppet around with you everywhere yeah like literally everywhere how did you start doing this basically what happened was we were at a barnes and noble and uh, we were in the kids section because she, I mean, she was pregnant at the time. And um, I just saw this turtle puppet. He pretty much looked like, he looked retardedly like cute. Can I say that? Well, you already did. Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I just pretty much grabbed it and just started like making a very awkward noises like, to her ear and uh, yeah th it was pretty much it was pretty funny because like a bunch of kids just kind of like looked at me while I was mm -hmm. making like these noises mm -hmm. okay and so you you were trying out the puppet and then uh what made you decide to buy it well oh uh, dude like her reaction pretty much I literally spent forty dollars on this puppet okay um, and how long have you been doing this? Hmm. I would say about six months, six months already. Okay. Six so you do deep. this, uh, you've been doing it for six months and you say you've been doing it every single time you guys go out in public. Almost every time. Sometimes she'll like kind of ask me to like, leave the puppet in the car which I, I, I kind of understand you know <laughs> Are you, is your wife at home with you right now yes she is actually can I talk to her <laughs> yes hey baby it's Lyle he no. wants to talk to you yeah no. about the puppet no it's <laughs> here this is not the way I wanted to meet therapy gecko. Hello. Hi. <laughs> what is your name? I'm Callie. I'm Christian's wife. Callie, it's nice to meet you. Um, I so okay. We got a perspective from Christian 
on this puppet situation and I was kind of wondering what your thoughts are on it because if I were married to him I would have gotten a divorce <laughs> around at about I, I, maybe I don't know what you guys like how long you were dating before but I would have divorced him at about a month of the puppet <laughs> um the thought crossed my mind <laughs> no I don't He's just weird. I don't. I don't know. It was just something that happened, and he just kept doing it because people thought it was funny. So, mm-hmm. does he do other things like this, or is this the first kind of um, prank that he has pulled on you? Um, I think that's pretty much. This is pretty much the only prank he's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, is does he do other things to annoy you or just the puppet? Well, when you're married, yeah, but but no, just just that one thing really. Mhm. Uh what is it about Christian that made you want to get married to him? I don't know. We just um like we were hanging out and we just kind of clicked and never really left each other. Hmm. Hmm. Is, yeah. is there anything that you've done to enact any kind of revenge against Christian for the puppet nonsense? Um, things are in the works. Not really, um, because I've been pregnant, so I couldn't. Really, I haven't really been able to do anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, not yet. But if you have any ideas, I'm all ears. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I would say you could get your own puppet, but I don't think that would work because Christian sounds like he, like he likes puppets. <laughs> yeah, you got me there. <laughs> now, what would now what would Christian have to do to make you leave him? Honestly, the only thing he could do is probably like cheat on me, and that would be the end. What if he cheated on you, but he used the puppet and then claimed that the puppet was cheating and not him? That's probably grounds for divorce, too. Even if it was the puppet? (laughs) Probably. That's... I'm sorry. Not not my thing. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, something tells me that, that you're not going to have to worry about that. No, at all. <laughs> what I don't is your name so again? Either. Callie. Callie. Um, hmm. How did you guys meet? So, it's a long story. So, I actually... Ew, Christian, stop. <laughs> so is he, did he bring the puppet out? Knew, no. So, that happened, like, a couple months into us being married. So how, so he knew some of the same people I knew, but we actually never met. Um, We were pretty much like he was with one girl and I was actually hanging out with her ex. And then we never knew each other until two years ago. And then um, we were like, what the fuck? (laughs) I don't know if I can curse on your podcast. But <laughs> we were like, what the hell? Like, we've never, like, we were pretty much in between people and we just never met. Hmm. Well, I find it very beautiful because it, it, it takes a lot of searching for a puppet guy to find a lady who does not <laughs> mind the puppets. And so I'm very happy That's for both of love. you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Callie, is there anything else that you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Um, no, just thanks for having me, I guess. Of That's, course, thank you guys for This has been really calling. cool and very interesting. It has been very cool and interesting for me as well. I still can't get over, and I was going to save this for my post-call thoughts, but it's not the fact that he occasionally bothers you with the puppet. It's the fact that he doesn't occasionally bother you with the puppet, that he bothers you with the puppet every single day. And he did it. For the entire time I was pregnant. <laughs> Are you sure there's not something going on underneath him? Yeah, I'm sure. 
Okay. You know him better than I do, so I trust you. Thank you for calling, Kelly. (laughs) Thank you. Every single day. I I see. I wouldn't be surprised if at one point he just stops talking at all. And then she just finds herself married to the puppets. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hey, what's up, man? I was just on your stream. What's uh what's your name, boss? Uh, my name is Nathan. Your name is Mason? Nathan. Nathan. Oh, it says here Mason, Nathan. but uh Yeah, I, I think I think the call screener got it a little mixed up. Well it's I mean it sounds like it's Nathan. I mean no, it sounds like it could be Mason. There's a thun. Yeah, I know. I have a friend named Mason. Um, I'm actually uh, I'm eating right now, and um, I got a potato almost stuck in my throat. I almost choked. Really? What were you thinking while you were um, while you were almost choking and dying? Um, get some water because that's what I have right now. I have some water in my position. So Mason, um, Mason, I, I'm gonna just I'm gonna kind of alternate between Mason and Nathan because I don't remember names and I don't care anymore because I just I can't do it. I've tried. I just Mason Nathan are the same name essentially. But I am talking to you right now. I'm on the phone with you, and me knowing your name is not that important. And I don't why care if that sounded mean. That's you. it's because it's true. Um, I don't know. That's that's why I love you, Lyle. That's why I love you so much. Mason, tell me why you called in today. If there was a reason, even. So, so my kind of like sole basis. So, I kind of just, I just want to talk to you basically. But what I really wanted to like say was time. That's what I told the screener. I was talking about time and the concept of time and how we're trapped in this reality of. Time is inevitable, right? But what if time didn't exist? Everything still went the same, but time was irrelevant. Mason, are you high right now? Mm -mm. I'm not. Okay. Okay. Um, So thinking about time, uh, what if time didn't exist? What time is it for you right now where you live? It's 9.45. 9.45. Tell me, Mason, what does 9.45 even mean? Exactly. Exactly. You're proving my point, right? I'm proving your point, right? What does 9.45 even mean? Tell me, tell me, what what does 9.45 mean to you, Mason? I want to know. So what it means to me. So time... Time is inevitably restricted, right? So 9.45 to me means, you know, it's that late, right? Like, oh, it's this time. It's pretty late, you know, it's 9.45. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not yeah. that late, but it's kind of getting there. But like what I was saying, what if that didn't even matter? You know? Hmm. So you're 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 trying to live in a world where the time does not matter. Where 9:45 oh, yeah. I mean, let's see, 9:45 it's nighttime. What are things that people don't typically do in the nighttime? They typically don't eat pancakes and waffles. You could go downstairs, make yourself some in a rebellion mm-hmm. against the clock. What what else don't people do at night? Um they don't uh what give give me some stuff? What 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 are some things that you would do right now, at certain times that you wouldn't do at other times? Um, get ready, like get really dressed up. You know, okay. you know, I mean, only if you're like going to a party, but like at a casual, you know, Friday night, you just and then you're just gonna go to the store. You know, and on, yeah. on a Friday night, you yeah. don't get you don't get dressed to go to the store, right? No. No. You know, you if you just, really wanted to, you re- you could right now get dressed up in a suit and go to this store. Mason, I have another question for you. Um, it says here that you claim you've been getting bullied a lot and you don't know what to do. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, let's yeah. get into this. What tell tell me tell me about this cuz we could argue about time forever, but I you know, here I could talk about time with anyone, but I can only talk about your life experience with you. So, uh what's 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 going on? Um, uh, so I mean, there's just these uh little hooligans, you know, a little messing with me. And what I told the screener is, you know, I don't I don't really care. You know, I don't really care that they're you know messing with me. I know how to deal with all that, right? You know, it's easy, but it's to the point where it's annoying. What are these you people know? doing to you exactly? So, like I told them already, you know, like, like back off, leave me alone. I don't like you. Like I really don't like you. I don't care if you'll beat me up. Just leave me well, alone. T- t- may, well Mason, won't. tell me what what are what types of things specifically are they doing to you? So, they're like, they're like calling me all these names. They always say, uh, so it's kind of a bit of, a little bit racist because I'm Mexican, right? Mm-hmm. So they always say, and I'm half Native American, but they, they don't know that, but they always yeah. be calling me like Beaner, you know, all this racial mumbo jumbo, whatever. Okay. Okay. And it's just. And it's like, and it's not to the point where it's just name. It's like physical sometimes, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They like push me, knock me on the head, you know. And I guess annoying. Mm-hmm. What have you been doing lately in response to all of this? So, um, like I said, I only really have. This, I mean, I have a solution, but it's not. The right solution okay tell me what you have as the solution that you believe is not the right solution um i think because you know like i think i would want to like fight them you know okay so you're you're considering yeah. physically fighting them back yes but i know that's the wrong option but you know if they're pushing me Putting their hands on me or whatever. Now I kind of have a reason to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. this is tough. I'm trying to think of, you know, trying to think of what I would say if you were my son, Mason. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, look, I believe that uh, cosmically. Right? Mason, you live your life trying to do the best that you can. Trying to be nice to people. Mm -hmm. I know that you don't deserve any of the things that people are saying to you or doing to you physically. Um, Mm -hmm. And I I hope that you are taking solace in that. That you know that the most important thing is that you are living in a way that is um, in line with how you feel you should. Uh, no, sir. Who are you? Who are you talking to? Is that your real dad? Yes. What's he up to? He just told me to take a shower. Have you talked to him about this? Uh... I do. Yeah, what did he say? He just said don't don't listen to him. I think that's smart. I I don't think I don't think you should fight these guys, you know, because I I yeah. I this is some weird hippie bullshit, but um, I I do believe it. It takes more strength to not fight than to fight, right? Because that's <clears throat> you. It's you overpowering your urges to do what you believe is correct and you said it yourself that you know that that's not the right answer for you and so I think when you're evaluating yourself uh, again that, that, it, that it takes more strength not to fight to and for you to control your emotions in such a way that allows you to act how you believe is, is the right way to and I hope that's what you do 
Because yeah. again, cosmically, I don't, I don't believe that there's any kind of a karmatic spirit that necessarily enforces this. But I do think that, you know, the the people who are bullying you will eventually grow up and, and recognize the error of their ways and uh, repent in, in however way they do and that um, things will work out for you as well. Yeah. And that on, on, only really yeah. can trouble come from you um, giving in to them. Because that's the real thing, right? If, if, these, if these people... You know, these people can call you names. They can push you around and whatever. But as long as you are not allowing yourself to be emotionally rattled or have your actions dictated by what they're telling you, then they don't have power over you. It's when you compromise your values by fighting back against them is is when they have won because they got to you. But it doesn't sound like they did, and I'm glad to hear that. Question. What's up? What's your What's your favorite band? Do you have any favorite band? Oh, band like music band. Yes. Um. Um. No, I don't really listen to music. Oh, cool. Nathan, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, listen to listen to Lyle on Spotify and support the Gecko Man. He's the most beautiful man in existence. He deserves to be uh, praised, and that's it. Hey, thank you for calling, Nathan. Cool. Um, that was that was an interesting one. Um, I'm always, uh, I, you know, I'm always open to being wrong about that kind of stuff. I know that some people have different opinions or, or, uh, you know, have different experiences with, um, dealing with being antagonized. And, uh, I don't think I'm necessarily right. That's just my own personal philosophy about it. Um, uh, who knows? Other people might be like, no, you have to fight. There's a song. Fuck, who sings that song? Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers has this song called Coward of the County. And the thesis of it is the exact opposite of what I just said. So if you listened to what I just said and you agreed with it, go listen to Kenny Rogers' Coward of the Country. No, Coward of the County. And then, because he gives an alternative point of view, and then come back, and then make up your mind. I don't know if I agree with the message, but it's a good song. Shout out to Kenny Rogers. <laughs>